Hey friends, Patrick here from the .NET Web Academy. And as you can see on the screen in .NET 9, we are getting something nice. As it says here, add static server-side rendering, SSR, pages to a globally interactive Blazor web app. Now, if you're a bit familiar already with Blazor in .NET 8, then you know we have these new interactive render modes like Blazor Server, Blazor WebAssembly, the auto render mode, which in essence is just both together. But we also have SSR, static server-side rendering. This means that we only have one project, as you will see in a second, and there everything comes or is rendered statically on the server, so it sends the finished rendered HTML to the client and we are done with that. But what happens if you need interactivity? For instance, if you want to click on a button and then something should happen and you don't want to use a form for that, then you need interactivity. And in uh, Blazor.net 8, let's open Microsoft Studio here, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. Hey friends, real quick, when you check out the screen here, you see that only 25% of you are actually subscribed to my channel. And if you watched a couple of my videos and really learned something, then it would really mean the world to me if you could just hit the subscribe button. It is free. It would help me creating more and more videos like the one you're currently watching. So if you want to learn something, support me for free, then please take the time, click that subscribe button. Thank you so much. And now let's continue with the tutorial. Then we create a new project. We say this is a Blazor web app. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. Let's say we call this Blazor Globally Interactive SSR.NET 9. This is an awesome name. And then we can choose when we are using the proper framework, which in this case should be .NET 9. So I'll ch I will change that in a minute. And then we have the option here to set the render mode, interactive server or WebAssembly or auto. And when we do that, let's leave this at server. Then we can decide if you want to check or use per page, per component or globally. Now this is important. All right, and now I switch to uh, Visual Studio, the preview edition, because only there you, I can use the .NET preview, as you can see here now. So .NET 9, again, server, and then we set this to global. So this means that you will see that in a minute in the code, we see that the whole application is using server render mode, Blazor server or WebAssembly. So let's create this thing. And then there you will see that this is actually done with only two lines of code, even one line would be enough for that. Here it is on my other screen. Then we go to the components. And then here we have the, the routes component, all right? And then in the app, you see that we are using this routes component. And here, already here, we set the render mode. Maybe you're familiar with that when uh, you see a single page here and you say, you want to use the render mode only on this page, only on this or for this component, the counter component, then you can also set the render mode here like that, right? Render mode and then interactive server auto, whatever you like. Or the alter alternative would be, for instance, we're here in the, on the home page, and then we say, I want to add my counter component and set the render mode here. And this is exactly the same thing that you see here in the uh, app razor, we're using the routes component and say that the routes component should be rendered interactively using the server render mode. And as you can see, then this is the component, meaning this thing, I don't want to go too deep here, but this thing now uh, uses the main layout, this thing here. And in the end, this is H HTML also with other components. And here, this add body thing, this is the actual content of our page. So you see, when you when you see the whole chain, then you know that everything that you find here in the body is then rendered uh, interactively with server mode, WebAssembly, whatever. Now, this took a long time to explain, but I think this is important to, so you have the foundation here, what's happening. And if you already knew that, then maybe this is a great recap. All right, so now, the problem is that sometimes you need these globally uh, or this global render modes for your application. By the way, you also see the head outlet. This is the title, for instance, of your page. Also render mode set to interactive server in this case. But it might be the case that you want to render 
a single page of this thing then statically on the server. A great example for that would be not the counter because here we need the interactive uh, render mode, but in the weather on the weather page here, what's happening here is actually we only get some information while well, we simulate getting information from the server, data from the server. So there's nothing really happening interactively. We could also use the, the SSR mode, the static uh, server side rendered mode, if you want, and uh, use stream rendering, for instance, so you, the user doesn't have to wait for the result. Let's just see that in action and then you know what I mean. And maybe you also then know what uh, I'm aiming for here that with .NET 9, we can change this. And similar to the current state in .NET 8, where we can say, okay, everything is rendered statically, but I want to use the counter page, for instance, and render only this page now um, interactively with Blazor server or Blazor web assembly. So only one thing per page or per component, and we can do it also then the other way around with .NET 9. So we see the counter here, we can click here, great. We can go to the weather page, it is loading, Fine. Now, what is happening when we go here and you see already that with this new attribute, we can change that, but we also have to change something else. And here, this is also why I showed you this earlier. This is the uh, app razor then with these changes. So yes, we will just copy and paste that stuff because I want to only show you what's going on here. So now when I do this, let's check this out. We go back then we get this strange, well, it's not really an error, but it says not found, okay? And this means we have to do something else or add something else here. So let's go back at this little code block here. So back to Visual Studio and then into the app razor. We have no code block here yet, but now we have. And we also use this page render mode and set this thing for the routes and the head outlets. All right. And now let's check this out. It is reloading. And now we have our data, but there is one thing. We go to the counter page, we go to the weather page, and maybe you already see it. When I click here, I have to wait for the data. And this is actually the problem that you also get when you're using the Blazor uh, static server side rendered mode. Jesus, so many render modes. And how can we fix that? So the user doesn't have to wait. We want a better usability, better user experience. Well, let's just use stream rendering. So attribute and then uh, stream rendering. And what this thing does is it is loading the page directly, but the data comes a tiny bit later. To be more exact, it's 500 milliseconds because we simulate an asynchronous loading scenario here. So we now restart the application. You see, we go to the counter page and now I click on the weather link and we're directly there. Similar, well, in essence, it's exactly the same experience if you would use still the Blazor server render mode. But now, and to prove that, we open the console and as you can see here now, let me just go to the home page. You already see something is going on here regarding WebSockets, right? We're using Blazor server globally. So we open a WebSocket connection. We go to the counter page, still a WebSocket connection. And when I now go to the weather page, it is reloading the complete thing and no WebSocket there. Now the big disadvantage of course is that it is reloading the complete thing. This is actually something that we want to avoid with Blazor in general maybe. So have this better user usability, user experience, but maybe for some reason and for more details, I encourage you to read that thing here. Maybe sometimes you don't want that. Maybe for instance, you want to use uh, the layout of Mud Blazor or Reds and Blazor and they recommend and as far as I know, you really have to use a global render mode to make the layout component work, but then maybe you want to change it in the long run so that you want to render certain pages statically. I'm not completely sure if this will work, to be honest. It's still the preview edition of .NET 9, but maybe it will. And in this case, then you can, uh, well, you can close the WebSocket connection and just use Blazor SSR as you know it. All right long video for a tiny thing maybe, but maybe it's a big feature for you. I don't know. I think this is great. This is a great uh, new feature of .NET 9. Great improvement. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments. This would be awesome. And if you learned something, guys, you know the drill, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel would mean the world to me. And maybe the .NET Web Academy is something for you. So, so check out the link below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time.
Take care.